city of the big gray flannel shoulders where fog comes at little cat feet. They told me you were brutal, and I answered, In what other city can I buy a judge for five bills and be so sure he'll keep his word? What's so brutal about that? Hog butcher for the world, laughing the stormy, husky, brawling laughter of youth. They told me you were crooked, that I answered, In what other city can I get homicide reduced to manslaughter? Manslaughter to a felony, a felony to a misdemeanor, and then get my gun back. What's so crooked about that? He was an enormous reputation very quickly. And he was a world figure then and uh, expected to go on for the rest of his life. He beat Dostoevsky. He's in the realm of a Chekhov. Nobody in America writes as well as Ogren. He was writing full time and was sort of about finished with the neon wilderness when he met Simone. He meets her and he takes her around. He shows her his version of Chicago. He takes her to lineups and, 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 and CD places. And uh, she's much moved by it. And they go to his apartment and they become lovers. Around 1950-51, he writes Simone that he, he finds the intellectual climate increasingly stifling. I don't think that the public consciousness of the surveillance, the first place, the surveillance wasn't as technically as broad or as yeah, technically as sure. accurate as now. And, but moreover, uh, people, I don't think the generation that was so distant in the 30s, I don't believe they got scared until the 50s when people were actually put in jail and people lost their passports and people were punished. From that time on, uh, I think a great uh, dent was made in uh, the inclination of people to speak out. You can get caught later, and people just uh, dummy up. He was really besieged on all sides, commercially, socially, and obviously intellectually by the Cold War culture. We live today in a laboratory of human suffering as vast and terrible as that in which Dickens and Dostoevsky wrote. The only real difference being that the England of Dickens and the Russia of Dostoevsky could not afford the sound screens and the smoke screens with which we so ingeniously conceal our true condition from ourselves. So accustomed have we become to the testimony of the photo weeklies, backed by witnesses from radio and TV establishing us permanently as the happiest, healthiest, sanest, wealthiest, most inventive, tolerant, and fun-loving folk yet to grace the earth of man. We tend to forget that these are bought and paid for witnesses and all their testimony perjured. 